This is a HeadGum Podcast. Take me on a trip I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York. I'd love to see L.A. I really want to come kick it with you. You'll be my American boy. American boy. (laughs) (sighs) That's my version of American Boy by Estelle, which it was also one of my favorite songs for ever. It still is, still really slaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to get right into it. The year is 2007. And we are doing something very special this episode because I do not have an American girl on my show. No, I don't. I'm going to tell you what was going on in the world in 2007 in Britain, the UK. Okay, for starters, the smoking ban happened in 2007. No more smoking indoors anywhere in the UK, honey. That's a huge deal. Okay. Tony Blair resigned in 2007. He said, ta-ta, not happening anymore. Um, other things that happened, a lot, of, um, a lot of things that I know nothing about, like the British Grand Prix. I will say the new Wembley Stadium was opened by Prince William, and they did a gorgeous concert for Diana there to christen this space, (laughs) which we love. Eurovision Dance Contest was held in London in 2007. And the Gaming Act of 1845 was repealed, meaning that for the first time more than 150 years, gambling debts can be enforced by the courts, which I actually find to be really interesting because it's like, wow, that's so sexy to be like, people coming after you for your gambling debts. You know what I mean? That's intense, I think. And then I guess, you know, I don't really know that much about um, sort of what happens in politics in the UK. So I'm just going to skip over that. But I would just like to note that J.K. Rowling's last Harry Potter novel, Mm -hmm. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, came out in the year 2007. Huge. Huge Huge for culture. And to just, if you're saying, oh, but Greta, that's not enough, don't worry. I'm also going to tell you what music was at the top of the charts. The British charts, that is. That's right. For starters, a moment like this by Leona Lewis. Grace Kelly by Micah. Remember that song? I do. Ruby by Kaiser Chiefs. Don't remember that. Shine by Take That. I don't remember that. Walk This Way by Sugar Babes versus Girls Aloud. <laughs> I love Girls Aloud. Just saying. I'm going to be 500 Miles by The Proclaimers featuring Brian Potter and Andy Pipkin. Give It To Me by Timberlands and Nelly Furtado and Justin Timberlake, which we remember that. Baby's Coming Back, Transylvania by McFly. Don't know that. Umbrella, Rihanna. Stronger, Kanye. Beautiful Girls, Sean Kingston. About you now, Sugar Babes. I don't know Sugar Babes. (laughs) And then finally, we end with Bleeding Love by Leona Lewis. Now, where were we in 2007 when all of this is happening? We are in Brighton. <laughs> Ho- Wait, <Somewhere>. fuck. <laughs> Brighton Hoxton, is that right? No, Brighton. Say it, say it, say it. I fucked it up. You fucked it all up. I did. Say, Bri- the, say, say it again. It's Brighton and Hove. Brighton and Hove. Yeah. Sussex. There you go. The United Kingdom. There we go. Yes. Hold on. This whole time, was I? were you talking to me or talking to your fans? I was your talking fans? to my fans. I was just making sure because I was being very polite and quiet. <laughs> you were, you were. Didn't know if I could interrupt. And now here we are. And I'm allowed to interrupt you to say and that And now we're wrong. London here. Now we're live. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh my God, London. <laughs> thank you for joining me. Great. Right, it's a bloody honor to be here. You know, I've only had one not other. No, I've had two other non-Americans on the Who show. Who were they? They're Canadians. Oh God. You know? So Jesus. You're the first person to come in here with a full accent, I'd thank say. Thank you. Thanks so much. You know what? I do love Canadians. Me too. I bloody love poutine. I do too. And they're good. I feel like Canadians are like half British though, because they've got the Queen yes. on their money. Yeah. So you had like half British. Now you've gone full blown. You yeah. dipped your finger in and now your fists in it. Now, oh, I love fisting. <laughs> um, I love going from fingers to fists. Yep. Yep. Um, now I have to know, because we were like kind of talking about the intricacies of this before we started recording. Mm-hmm. High school, 
two years college, then university. Yeah. Explain it all to me. Yeah, very I can break it down because yeah. I honestly. I still am very confused by the American way of everything. I don't know what is a freshman or a softman or a, a softman. <laughs> what are they called? A softman. It's a softman. A softman, a freshman, and honey, a softman a is what you got last night. Hey, okay. hey. Um, <laughs> a senior, junior, all yeah. that shit. Can I swear? Yeah. Okay, all that shit <laughs> confuses me. So I'm sure it must be confusing the British system. So basically, in the UK. You, first of all, you can't get left back. That's the thing you get yeah, left back Yeah, you can get here. held back Yeah, here. no, if you miss all of school, you'll still graduate. Like, really? you still move to the next year. Yeah, there's no... There's no, like, requirement that you need to, like, no. meet X amount of days or, like, No, your whatever. parents can get arrested and stuff. Like, mm. the welfare officer will knock at your door like you haven't been in school. But, like, you will move up a great... Like, you don't go back right. or whatever. And we don't have, like... We don't graduate. We don't call it that. So, basically, you're born... And then we have kindergarten, which we call reception. Wait, when does that start? Yeah, you're, you're four years old. Okay, it's so called that's reception. Reception, that's reception, cute. and that's when you're that's kindergarten. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and that's primary school. Okay, so reception one, two, three, four, five, six, primary school. Then you leave primary school and go to secondary school, which is year. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay. You leave secondary school at sixteen, and then you can go out into the world. That's it. Like really? you really can just get a job. And say, fuck you, education, I've completed it. Really? If you want to, at 16, legally. So you can leave secondary school and go forth and thrive and whatever. Or you can go to college. College is two years. Okay. You only go to college if you want to go to university. There's okay. no point in going to college and doing two years if you don't plan on going to university. Right. So you do two years. And at the end of those two years, you take you choose four subjects. And at the end of those four subjects, you have a thing called A-levels. And they're big exams. And those A-level results determine whether you get into university. So you leave college at 18, get into university from 18. And then depending on what you do, whether you do like a master's, PhD, if you just do a simple normal degree, that's yeah. three years. And you leave university at 21 with not a lot of debt. Uh, my debt, my student loan charged me, my university was nine grand Nine grand in total. So wow. three, three, six, nine, three grand a year. Oh my God. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, nine grand at the end. And if you don't make a certain amount of money at, after five years, you don't have to pay it back. <laughs> okay, looks <laughs> like Education. I'm moving to London, Education. honey. But yeah, there's obviously other, so I think the most a university can charge is like nine grand a term and it's free, uh, nine grand a year and it's three years. So you get the free year, six or nine. Yeah, so three grand, six grand, or nine grand. And I think my university was only three grand, or maybe it was six grand. Wow. I don't even remember paying it back. I don't remember missing the money. I don't even, I don't even know. That's <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. That's like, that's so interesting that, did you go to school with a lot of people that at 16 were like, I'm done with this? So yeah, and so because of that, they paid us to go to college. Wait, what? Yes, yeah, so we got paid £30 a week, which is about $45 a yeah. week. Yeah. Just to go. That's crazy. It was called, what was it called? It was called EMA. I don't know what EMA stood for. Something like, something maintenance allowance. It's basically saying, if you go to all your classes, the government will give you $45 a week. So people were, that was an incentive. It was like, yeah, to, to stay go. In school. Yeah. Because a lot of people at 16, especially in my neighborhood or my area, were like, fuck that. I'm just going to go become a car salesman. And then people yeah, I was were like, gonna say, what do people do when they like so were 16 and like 16, out in the I workforce? I worked in a shop. I worked um, in a clothing store. I did too. Yeah. So that was me at 16. I was on like five pounds an hour. So mm -hmm. it's like $6 an hour. Seven dollars hour? Yeah, like a little more. But we have free healthcare. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah. So like so it's, it's kind easier of like, to live on. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. I worked at a clothing store too, and I also worked like I always had jobs in high school, but I guess if I were to end high school at 16 and then someone would be like, okay, now I need to go and be a professional, I would be like, Yeah. What? But a lot of people did do that. Yeah. And there was like I remember leaving school at 16 and there'd be all these like videos and incentives and it was like this is Dan Dan left school at, well I don't know why I'm doing an American accent this is Dan Dan <laughs> left school at 16 yeah. Dan decided that he didn't want to go to higher education so he decided to sell cars now Dan makes X amount of years like X amount of years this is Luke Luke went to higher education oh. and right now when Dan was making this amount 
Luke wasn't making that money, but now Luke is the head of a company. Right, he right, makes right, X right. amount. So it was all like, yeah, you can get quick money now if you leave now. But if, but you, if wait. you stay and do higher learning, then you'll end up winning in the long run. Which you, isn't exactly true. I know people with degrees that are broke. So yeah, um, I know a lot of people that went to like very prestigious yeah. colleges and universities that yeah. are like, mm, and also here are in a shitload of student debt. Exactly, which I heard people have to remortgage their houses. Oh and my stuff. God, it's crazy. This is the thing. That's why I'm like, if I'm having to put all that work into it and remortgage my house and pay all that money, I should be guaranteed a top tier job. Absolutely. So it's when you're 100%. not, it's like, blur. I know. But I dropped out of uni. So I'm so a, wait, I'm a you university dropout. dropped out of uni, dropout. which is the... Wait, so then you did college and then you went to uni. Yeah, so I started stand-up comedy on my um, in my second year at university. And I was studying television. So my thing was, I want to be on TV. I know. I'll study television. Yeah. <laughs> That's what made sense to me. I mean, that does make sense. But it was a terrible degree. It was all theory. And mm. they just made us watch a lot of Friends. That's <laughs> so funny. We just watched episodes of Friends and was like, in this episode, Joey, uh, how does Joey's manhood depict, how does he feel in the, the American culture towards whiteness and the all of that. It was just writing thesis is on Friends. That we watched The Wire. so weird. <laughs> yeah. So that was my degree. And then in second year of university, I became a comedian. I got an agent. And I remember my agent was calling me to do auditions. And I was leaving lectures. And my agent would ring me in the lecture. And I'd be like, I can't. I'm in my lecture. And she, one day she said, London, do you want to be on television? Or do you want to study television? Oh, my God. And I was like, fuck, yeah. So I, I, I said, I want to be on television. So I went to my audition. I got the part. And I got this job hosting a children's TV show, children's BBC, CBBC. It's equivalent of like me. Like PBS? No, like Nickelodeon. Like, oh, sick. Yeah, it was equivalent of me hosting Nickelodeon. Well, I guess, yeah, if it's BBC, it's like yeah, kids' BBC. It's, it's the highest BBC, biggest yeah. BBC channel in the world. B biggest children's channel in the UK. Children's BBC. I was hosting it. And so I had to drop out of university because I couldn't do both. And then seven years later, my uni invited me back to give a talk to the the now teens in my class that want to know how to make it in television. And I had to basically tell them all to drop out. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Damn. Crazy. When you, okay, so to go back to, I guess, secondary. Yes, come school. on now, learning the yeah. lingo. So like sec your secondary is like our high school, okay, yes. essentially. Mm -hmm. Except What's a PS13? A PS what? Or a PS... Like, I watched Hey Arnold. Oh, yeah. PS stands for... Okay, so in... <laughs> <laughs> in Hey Arnold. In New like York City and in New York, really. And I don't know many other school districts that do this. I think it's predominantly just in New York. PS stands for public school. Uh, so you... Depending on where you were, like, if you're in... Let's say I'm, I'm making this up, but if you're on like the Lower East Side, your public school would be PS 119, which okay. is like public school number 119. Oh, so it's that's like, the how uh, the what? Yeah, public school number 119. Yeah. Yes, correct. So the PS stands for like public. Oh, I went to PS 50. I went to PS 41. I went to PS whatever. So it's wow. just public school and then a number. And that's only in New York. I think, I think so. That's the wow. only school district that I'm aware of. Granted, I've only lived in, I grew up in Washington, D.C., lived in New York City for 10 years, and now live here. Okay. So the only that, exposure what, yeah, I have. There could be other PSs. There could be other cities that have PSs. Wow. I, I don't know, but I do know in New York, if you are, you know, walking around a neighborhood and you see a public school, you will see it. It will say. It will say PS. PS. Wow. Blah, blah, blah. So I, yeah, I remember watching Hey Arnold and being like, PS, that's what they call their schools. PS. Hey Arnold was the show. Yeah, it was. It I, was the show. Huge crush on Gerald. Of course. Shaped my, my womanhood. Gerald is hot. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Helga Pataki. Helga Pataki. I, I understood. I Heartbreaks for Helga. Heartbreak for Helga. I mean, that... Chewing gum shrine. To oh my Arnold, god! Though, that she met like crazy. it's top tier. It's top tier. Did they ever get together? I feel like there was one episode where they kissed. I'm thinking I hope they so. did kiss. Listen, I hope so. American TV shaped my whole life. I'm, Tell me more. Like, I think people don't understand. It's so annoying. It's so infuriating for me as a British person when I come to America, and I know so much about Americans, and they don't know anything about me. And it's just like my whole life, 
I grew up being influenced by your culture. So and when, you know nothing about mine. Well, it's crazy. When you're in secondary school. Yes. What was your like how, you know, you've you've been inundated with American yes. television and movies. So you know the yes. concept of like high school cliques and yes. like and jocks and goths oh my God. and like theater nerds. Oh like, my god. Was that happening? No. And I was thoroughly <laughs> upset because I grew up watching American TV and I was like, I can't wait to go to high school. Yeah. And I imagined my high school through the eyes of a young girl in America. Yeah. And the reality is not true. Like, first of all, I wanted to go to school on a school bus. We don't have school buses in Britain. I wanted a locker. We don't have lockers. I had a tray. What do you mean you had a tray? We had a little tray. What's a you, tray? As in, like, imagine like a, drawer? a shelf. Yeah. That you pull out. Yeah. And you put your books in and then close it. Like a drawer we all, with our names on it. Oh, fuck. There was no lock. I couldn't put Justin Timberlake and stick his face inside. And you couldn't do the thing where you... Hear, you know what I love about the locker? You open it up. Don't, don't And then you show hear... Off. Over Don't and you off. see someone and, and then you turn, turn and slam it. it. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> Didn't do that. I wanted to be prom queen. We don't have proms. I wanted to be a cheerleader. We don't have cheerleading. I wanted to date, go to band camp. We don't have band camp. You I wanted were to do robbed. debate team. Don't have debate team. Don't have anything. Really? Shit. No clubs? No, we have like after school clubs, but they were like French. Like if you want to do French after school, <laughs> like, it wasn't anything like fun. You wanted... I wanted the full experience. You wanted Mean Girls. You mean wanted girls, Varsity jocks. Blues. Yes. You wanted... Also, I wanted to wear my own clothes. We had to wear uniforms. Mm. There was only one day a year we could wear our own clothes. It was called Mufti Day. Mufti oh, Day? Mufti Day, you can wear your own clothes. That is the most British shit I've ever heard. Mufti Day. Day? But you're not allowed to wear designer. <laughs> no brand names. What? So could, because you didn't want other... Kids like, what does that insecure. mean? Like, you couldn't wear, like, a polo shirt that had, no, like, a polo no, Ralph Lauren? No. Okay. Okay, well, I appreciate Musty that. Musty day. Your own clothes, but nothing... Nothing flashy. Nothing flashy. Nothing, nothing too Nothing that had brands. No. And then I wanted, like, that whole meet a guy and, like, like in Clarissa, where Sam climbs up through... Yeah. Onto, the, onto a window seat. Well, one I of the just, window seat. I you would, get a window seat. I, too, was robbed of a window seat. Okay, cool. So I want you to know that okay, I cool. never had a window seat I either. all American girls had window seats. No. <laughs> okay, cool. I feel a bit better. <laughs> no, I did not have a window I seat. I feel much better. I also, I pined for the Southern California high school experience. Right. Which was like jeeps and beaches and outdoor right. hallways and like Same. someone climbing up your trellis trellis yeah, yeah. so no. here's the thing i i i wanted that but i didn't also watch a lot of save the last dance and like so my my high school experience in america was like it's beaches and gunshots like yeah. it was just like yeah where it's like, like oh like, that, it's in a city and it's yeah. cold but then you can go to the beach i remember i used to write a lot of I used to write a lot of fan fiction before it was called fan fiction. It was just called A Thursday Night at London's House back in the day. I love that. <laughs> so I would like sit there and write myself into American TV shows. And a lot of the times that, you know, I'm writing and I've never been to America and I found like some of my old stories I wrote. And like I lived in Malibu, but yes. then like, I got on a train and I got to New York. Like, and that like, makes sense. I was like, oh, I'm in New York yeah, now. makes sense. And then like I drove to the beach, but then also like I was like in Vegas, but then I was in New York. But then like it was just crazy because no. I just didn't know where everything was. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. To me, that's a beautiful child Thank brain. You. Yeah, no, I was very into America. Like I'm, it's, abs my family think I'm crazy because I've said my whole life I'm going to be Famous in America. I'm going to live in America. And they're like, okay. And now here you are. And I'm here. Famous <laughs> living in America. And they're like, oh, she wasn't joking. joking. Like, she was serious. Did Were you alone in, like, your obsession with American mm. culture? Not alone because every black British person is. That's why, you know, I don't know why people think that, like, we're so different. <laughs> Some African Americans are like, why do black Brits come over here and do our accents so well? And it's because, literally because we grew up not seeing any black people on TV. So the first black woman I saw on TV was African-American. It was Aunt Viv mm -hmm. in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, yeah. Janet Huber. So as a young girl, you're watching TV. I was obsessed with television. I wanted to be inside it so badly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we only had four channels back in the day, in the 90s. And out of the four channels, they were just white people. So when I saw black people, they were American. So right. I just assumed to be famous, 
I had to be American. Then you turn on the radio, black British music weren't in the charts. All right. the music was American. So I'm listening to Destiny's Child. I'm watching Moesha. I'm watching right. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You, uh, the clothes I'm wearing are American. Right. I'm wearing my my, my 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 baby fat and my rocker wear and my Sean John and my House of Darion. So I'm thinking, oh my God, House of Darion. Yeah, my House of Darion. So may, like, may House of Darion rest. Listen, <laughs> Miss Tina, she tried. Miss Tina tried. She, she, like, and she succeeded. She succeeded. She's yeah. a whole queen. But this yes. is the thing. We grew up on the culture. Yeah. So I, as a young black girl in Britain, is I identify with being a you know, an African-American star. So yeah. I used to pretend I was like Af- African-American a little bit. Like, I've got cousins settling about there. And, yeah, I'm from, I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kelly from the Bronx. Yeah, you fully <laughs> describe like <laughs> Sean, Sean Patrick Thomas's character Literally. from Save the Last Dance. Oh, yeah, that's my cousin. Yeah. My cousin? So you're my cousin. My cousin's actually an amazing dancer. He's a great dancer. <laughs> Have you seen Save the Last Dance? my cousin. Like, we all did it. We all, there's, everyone's got a story where like, Someone knows someone who used to live next door to Beyonce. Of like course. everybody has that. It's, so, it's lore. It's yeah. like, it's. We were obsessed, obsessed with, with American culture and African American culture. Did you, so when you were in high school, like, were you in a clique? Was that like a prominent I thing? To be. Yeah. So I, so in high school, I was a nerd, mm-hmm. 100%, 100% nerd. Like, I would be upset if I got the equivalent of a, B plus, like oh I was like, yeah, no, I'm. You're a good student, yeah, very good studious. Student. You took it seriously. Yeah, I was in school every day. I really liked school. Mm. I got on well with my teachers. Everything was fine, and I just wasn't popular, and it just, uh, like, it just grated me. Who were who was popular? So because I, what were the credentials right. to be popular? So I went to an all girls school in South London. The school was predominantly black, so I I would say it was like sixty percent black, and then like. And then maybe like Asian. And then the I feel like the whites were the minority in that school. I don't know. Maybe they weren't. But in my life, I'm just thinking all the people that were around me. But my best friend was a white girl called Emily. And me and Emily used to listen to Avril Lavigne. <laughs> 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 and I just used to be like, I we used to speak. So I learned German in school. We used to text each other in German. Like, that's so <laughs> nerdy like, and cute. That's cute, you know? Yeah, that's you know that means cinema. Do you go to cinema? Question mark. That's yeah. really <laughs> funny and cute. So like I, that was what I enjoyed. And then there were these black girls that were like the coolest of the coolest of the coolest, and they would all listen to Sean Paul, and they'd know how to dance and like grind and wine and twerk, twerk. And I'd be like, I want to be like them. I want them to know I exist, but. It just, they didn't, they were mean and they didn't like me and it hurt my feelings. And um, it all came to a head when basically uh, I decided to have a Pizza Hut party. Uh, <laughs> it always comes to a head at a pizza party. Pizza party. And I invited all the popular girls. It was my first attempt of like infiltrating the popular group. And I invited everyone and all the popular girls. And um, at the time, my mum, like my mum worked, my mum and dad were divorced. My dad was very much in my life, but my mum worked hard and my dad worked hard. And they were like, we can pay for all the ice cream because you can get the ice cream machine. Like, oh, you can eat ice cream. Oh my god! Which is the equivalent of like a free bar. For yeah. Us back then, hello. So, I like, literally. It would still eat. be insane if someone was like, "We have a free ice cream dispenser." Right. I'd be like, "Okay." Yeah. Or you can eat ice cream for ten of your female friends. Amazing. And then, like, they at the time we had pocket money, so it's like pizzas back then were like four dollars. Yeah. Like four dollars. So they have to pay for their own pizza, but though my mom said she'll pay for all the drinks and all you can eat ice cream. So I invited everyone. And then one popular girl was like, Ugh, I'm not going to your party if I have to pay for my own pizza. Oh my God. And so she told all the other popular girls to boycott the party. Those popular girls, girls told all the other lesser popular girls and it trickled down to the nerds. And so by then, like everyone was boycotting this party. So on my birthday, it was just me and my mom and Emily and uh, this huge empty table. And I was like eating pepperoni pizza with a like little crown on crying. And then a popular girl showed up, like pushed through the door. And I was like, oh my God, they're actually going to come. And they went and sat at the table opposite me and had a whole party and laughed in my face. <laughs> Girls! I know. The sh- yes. That's really yeah, mean. 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 
But That's yeah. fucked up. So after then, I was like, okay, I'm going to just stop trying to be popular because it's too much heartbreak right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's um, a party. We're going to take a little break <laughs> and be right back. No, that sounds so sad. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's perfect. <laughs> If you know me, you know that I am horny, which is why I am so excited to tell you about M Joy, which sounds like enjoy, but is actually M Joy. M Joy is a sexual well being audio app that gives you access to a huge library of audio guides, well being tutorials, and erotic stories. You can download M Joy and learn how to climax consistently, improve your libido, love your body, and improve your relationships. All of M Joy's content is scientifically backed, created by a team of sexual health experts, and they release new batches of audio erotico every single week. So there's always something new in fresh and frisky for you to feast your little ears on. You can find MJoy on the Apple App Store and on the Google Play Store. I just, I'm obsessed with this app because it's so fun because I'm someone where I personally really like it when I get to listen to sexy little stories, such as one that I found today titled, Wanna Ride in My Car? A Her and Him Dirty Talk Flirty Little Clip. And also, all of them are extremely manageable lengths. So, do yourself a favor. All the senior superlative listeners can get a free 14-day trial to mjoy with the link let's mjoy.com slash podcast and you can find this link in the show notes that's mjoy e for erotic and m for mm, joy i was very bullied as well and the thing is it like hurts you then and then also it now when you look back you're still like oh that was so mean yeah you know it's yeah. like it's not like when you reflect on it you're like oh i get it it's like no no no, no. you were bitches yeah like if i see you today it's on site yeah like, if you walk it no I'm just yeah if you are gonna you walk it right on. now do you know what i'm glad you got bullied because i feel like the best people in life got bullied man like all of my oh. friends got bullied yeah same everyone that i'm close everyone with bullied. who i have love and care for got bullied and it's just like that i used to say to myself and it's so crazy i don't know how i had the foresight to say it but whenever i got bullied i would say don't worry landon the popular people in school don't go on to be the popular people in life i mean that's true that's, so, a, that's also very like something you probably heard from like yeah. a t- an american tv I show <laughs> so i just would tell myself that and it's kind of true it I don't is know true anyone that got bullied i mean anyone that bullied people in school that's absolutely thriving now i don't know anyone like that if they are, they are certainly not saying they ever yeah, bullied anyone true. too. That's true. But well, yeah, Donald Trump. I'm sure Donald Trump bullied people. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, hundred percent. Still, I'm like <laughs> the world. Yes, he bullied the world. Yes, yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> so you just desperately wanted to be in America. You wanted to be an American television yes. star. You and your friend Emily. You rode out the rest of high school together. Yes. Did you have a boyfriend? So I went to all girls school. So having a boyfriend, it was crazy because you know, like you turn hot. But yeah. You don't know you've turned hot. Yes. So like I didn't know I had turned hot until. There's like a popular boys school which was near us called Selhurst Boys. And all mm. the boys that went there were like badasses. Yeah. And so there was like the most, one of the most popular boys at Selhurst Boys School. I was walking to school and uh, by myself with my books and all I heard was, Psst, oi. And I was like, he's obviously not talking to me. <laughs> and I carried on walking. He's like, oi, 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 oi. And I was like, I don't really know what's happening. And then he was like, so back then, what would they call, they would call me, a buff ting. So he was like, oi, buff ting. And now like, obviously, I had never been called a buff ting before. Buff ting, yeah. spelled B-U-F-F-T space, space T-I-N-G. So if you're buff, that means you're fine. Yeah. You're attractive. So if you're a buff ting, you're a fine woman. So he was like, you're buff ting. Now, you know, I've never been called a buff ting before. No. But I thought, let me look around. It might be me. <laughs> you're like let me check and see who's in the who's around me who's around if there are other buff things around yeah. i don't know and i turn and he clocked eyes with me he's like yeah you buff ting, come here and i was like me and he's like yeah what's your name and i was like london he was like oh you go to he said the name of my school norby manor he's like you go to norby manor i was like yeah and he was like hey give me your number and i was like 
like, okay. So that's when I realized I'm actually a bafting. But the bullies ruined it that moment as well. This is going to be really sad. No, what did they do? <laughs> Also, I need to find these nasty fucking nasty bitches. bitches. So I was so excited that this guy, his name was Kyron. Kyron asked me for my number. And like, I just was like, this is crazy. I skipped to school. And then I was in food technology class. Which what is that? Is what you would call home economics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was with one girl who was a bully, but she was in a lot of my classes. So she was a bully who tolerated me. But when she was with the other girl, she was rude to me. But to my face in classes, she was quite cool. So I told her like... Guess what? Like Kyron. Just yeah, yeah, my yeah. Number. She was like, Kyron who? And I'm like, you know, Kyron, Kyron. She's like, there's no way. And I was like, trust me, he did. She's like, nah, 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 I don't believe it. And then she texted him and she was like, yo, Kyron, did you ask London? Did you ask Ugly Big Lip London for her number? And he was like, oh, no. And then like, she showed it to all the girls and was like, see? And I was like, no, look. And I like, had his number in my phone. I was like, see? And he and Kyron like rang her at lunch and told her to tell me to delete his number. And so, and then everybody laughed at me. <laughs> so I deleted it out of my phone. And then like at the end of school, I think Kyron came to laugh at me some more. And then like all the girls were like, London lied that Kyron asked her out. And he was like, yeah, I would never do that. Ugh, she's ugly. And then I was like crying. Boys, girls, yes. Kyron's probably in prison right now. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't... <laughs> like, literally. That is so fucking... How did you... Like, I what know. did you do? Nothing. What can you do? Like, you just get over it. Well, yeah. Like, I, I cried a lot. I cried. You just cry and then you just go, okay. And then, I mean, I, I guess, like... It's when all in my book. <laughs> like, when we're young, we do have to develop this, like very primal form of resilience yes. because you have to go back every single day and see the same people every right. single day and then as adults it becomes less so yeah because, because we now just we cut people out right and i was so, like yeah. oh fuck you like yes. bye and i actually think that as adults we almost become more thin skinned 100 million thousand percent grow because we're just like like especially in our business now yep. when people get to be like critical of us or reject us oh, you're or all out. this shit oh you are out yeah so it's then becomes even more challenging when I think like if I'm having a bad day in this line of work mm -hmm. where I'm just like god like I feel like people are rejecting me or like not seeing me it takes me back to this like very primal place of being an adolescent and being back to being like, fuck, like this world is not understanding me. These people are not understanding me. And then I hate feeling that way now because now I'm like, wait, like you don't get to do this to me this anymore. This is what I'm saying. We are all our child, child trauma. That yes. is like a fact. Mm -hmm. So literally you are so correct. And I didn't even realize it until now. Now in my life, I have very low tolerance for fuckery. Yeah. So like I have friends and if you betray me or you just do fuckery, you're out. I will Ooh. cut you off with the ease. I can cut people off so easily. Like if you're in my circle, I love you. You are so important to me. You do me wrong, you're gone without a blink. Well, and because, it's because of that. It's well, it's like of, you yeah, don't have time. Do not have time. And also the trust can be so easily broken. Yes. Like, that's I'll give like, people chances, but like, I'm, I'm done. I'll give friends chances. Yeah. Professional people, oh, I no, am I'm, immediately I'm, I'm out. No, yeah, no, 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 I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, all of you guys are full, full of shit. Yeah, bye. Everyone's lying. Yeah. Until you give me a check, until the money clears my bank account, yeah, then you're bye, not bye. lying. It's weird because <laughs> I thought I'd have a lot of. When I moved here, I was like, oh shit, these the girls are gonna hate me. No. In LA, I've had the most nicest. Yeah. Group of women in comedy. Yes. reach out and be supportive of me considering I'm well, the new girl. We're a special pack of people. Yeah, and I was worried about that. Yeah. I was like, they're going to fucking hate me. This girl, she's come out of nowhere. She's got a Netflix special produced by Kevin Hart. Who the fuck is she? Right. And like, literally everyone's been so sweet. That's so nice. So uh, that's one thing I'll say. Well, I'm happy you're having a positive experience. Yeah, I'm having the best. I have not got any horror stories about any women in the industry in LA so far. That's great. So, yeah. If there's like a quintessential story from your secondary school that like is just something that's so 
a story that sticks out in your head as being like emblematic of that time, what what would it be? What emblematic of secondary school? No, of like your experience, like of 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 who London was then. Ooh. There's so many. I don't want a sad one because I feel like I've got all the bullying. <laughs> Let's just not do bullying stories. That's too happy. Um, I, I won student of the year. Okay. In 2002, three. I must have been like 14. Yeah, yeah, 2003. So I won student of the year. And I remember just being so proud of myself that's so sweet and so when i got the trophy and like there's only one per- one student of the year it's not like you know no. just out of everyone in the school student of the year and i remember like going up and doing a speech and being like believe in yourself follow your dreams and it was like one day and they were like what are your dreams london and i was like one day i'm gonna be a big star in hollywood and they were like oh london no <laughs> Being, the kids being like, oh, she goes again. <laughs> no. And I just remember being like, and like, because I had achieved that. I was like, my thing is like, if I achieve one thing that I think is really hard, yeah. then I can do something that's probably easier. And for me, getting student of the year is a lot harder yeah. than being a star in America at that time. So I was like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. So yeah. I mean, fair. Yeah. Like, that's how I saw, like, I remember just like being very, like the process of being successful I'd watch if someone else did it or I'd see yeah. like what so I remember being 12 and realizing that Britney Spears had made it onto the Mickey Mouse Club at 12 and I remember speaking to my mom and dad like you have no plans for my future I'm not on the Mickey Mouse Club I'm not on Barney yeah I, I'm I'm 12 and I'm going to be past it soon and so what are you doing to ensure my future? And they laughed at me. And from then I was like, I've got to do it myself. Mm-hmm. I've got to be that person that gets me there. So getting student of the year was like one step towards oh my achieving God. my dreams. So yeah. <laughs> I I remember being in like the fourth grade and begging my mom for an agent. Oh, me too. I was like, what, what did she do? What did she say? Did she laugh at you too? She said, no. What's wrong with that? She said, she said, if you want to get yourself, because I grew up in D.C. She was like, if you want to get yourself on a train and go up to New York and get yourself on, you can. Obviously, I couldn't. Know Obviously. Like nine. But. I, Why like, did they get it? I don't know. Because now I think to myself, if I were to have a kid. Right. Yeah. Like. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, then, of course, I see like the Hillary Duffs of the world. Right. Yeah. And she's like so successful, seemingly pretty well adjusted yeah. for all. Uh, her childhood stardom. Yeah. But then you and got Britney. I know. And it's kind of like, well, I guess it comes down to just like being a genuinely good parent. And I don't know. I think that what does that look like? What does that mean? It's so subjective. It's so complicated. Yeah. And also the industry is like, you know, it's not an industry that you would let your child just walk into lightly. Like my mom was very much against it. Yeah. I remember like my early days when I had an agent. And like I'd audition and my mum would be like, did you get the part? And I'd be like, well, I don't know. And she'd be like, well, do they, do they tell you? And I was like, no. When and I had to like, explain. What? <laughs> where's, where's, where's HR? I was like, there's no HR. I know. That you could just ring and be like, they didn't get back to me about my audition. <laughs> when <laughs> I have to explain to like my aunt how taping works. Oh, God. She's like, wait, so you, ad- you spend time and you audition for something. And I'm like, yes. yes. And she's like, and then you just... N- maybe never ever hear back ever again yes. and I'm like yeah and that's how you know you didn't get it and <laughs> yeah. because you never hear from them ever again <laughs> my mom was like what she did not understand so I guess when I was like I want to be famous I want to be on TV I want to be on TV she was like okay 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 but I took it really seriously I remember wanting to go to LaGuardia I yeah. didn't even oh know oh my god that was the dream but like I'm in Britain like I yeah. don't even know how to get to fucking LaGuardia I know but, but that I remember, was the like, dream I want to go to LaGuardia. Like, uh, like that was like a thing. Like, inside I me, I wanted it so bad. Desperately wanted to go to the like arts high school in DC yes. called Duke Ellington, which yes. is where Chappelle went. Yes, yes, yes. And I really wanted to go there mm-hmm. so badly. In hindsight, like, you know, you need to audition and you need to do all yeah. these things. And I wish that I had, because I think it just would have been such a completely different of experience. But then I like the way that we got into this industry authentically. Uh, yeah, and I was also about to say, I think that there's something to be said for having, like, especially as comedians, like, having life experience mm-hmm. and, like, going through a full, you know, 
childhood <laughs> as a as a normal human. as a yeah like not as a famous kid that's true i think that's why it's i feel like it's so rare that there are like comedians that are also child stars yeah that's true because you wouldn't be able to you have a warped sense of reality You're, yeah you wouldn't be relatable to the, to no, the average you, audience you have a completely different point of reference yeah it's interesting i'm glad i got into the industry how i did i tried so many times i did the whole uh get asking my parents for an agent they wouldn't they they did what your parents did but then i took matters into my own hands and we have this thing called the yellow pages mm -hmm. which is directory of all the businesses in the area yeah and so i scrolled to find the the, the word agent because everything's up there now right for order scrolled I did not scroll i turned pages. yeah <laughs> scrolled turn pages to find agent now they didn't have agents but what realtors are called in the uk are estate agents mm. so i rang up a realtor asking for representation and i ran up my mom's phone bill and got banned from foxton's which is a is, which is a uh, estate agent and they were like banned all my mum's calls then my mum was so mad because I was ringing every so single estate agent funny yeah that's what they're called estate agents oh my god so I was like hi I'm looking for representation they were like who is this okay stop calling and I'm like no, no. I'm serious I'm serious like, well, I was like pranking so them so funny but I was like yeah I want an agent I'll take matters into my own hands yeah and then I auditioned for Big Brother UK five times yeah, because I thought if I'm going to be famous, I have to go the reality TV route because that's how people are being famous nowadays. So I'll just go on Big Brother and then I'll be famous off of Big Brother and then I'll use that as leverage to kickstart my career in Hollywood. Like, that's how I saw it. And um, I got into Big Brother UK, but then the process was crazy. But when I finally got in, I had to, have, if I did go in the house, I would have had to repeat my first year of university again. And I was like, oh, this is a bit, mm. And at the time, they make you do so many psychological tests that I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this show. Like, it was insane, what the did process. What do? So the process was just, like, fucking crazy. There was, like, oh, you're auditioning, but you were put in a room with, like, eight different people, and you had to argue for and against certain things. Then every hour, you had to nominate someone to leave and get kicked out of the audition process. And, like, you really believed that, like, that nomination would be kicking them out of the audition process. And, like... I remember getting into an argument with this guy because we had to argue for and against um, benefits, which is like, if you, in in Britain, if you're struggling to find work, they pay for you to right. to live. And like, he was arguing that that shouldn't happen. And I was arguing that, it sh that I didn't know really what it was. And as a black person, he didn't believe that I'd never been on like financial aid. And so he was like, what? You're black. How do you not know what it is? And I was like, what? What are you saying? Oh, my I was God. like, my mom was never on financial aid. My dad was never on financial aid. I've never been on financial aid. And they got into a big argument about race and everything. And it was this giant man. He must have been about 40. And I'm like 18. And he's just shouting at me. And the cameras are filming. I just started crying. And then I had to go into the version of the diary room. And the producers were like, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know. And he were like, look, London, this, this, this process is hard. Are you sure you can do Big Brother? And I was like, I want to be famous. And they were like, you've actually got more chance of being that without the show. They were like, London, you're very, very funny. You're likable. You're a nice girl. You know, this might not, this show might hinder you. And I remember being like, okay, that was in the back of my mind. And then my university was like, well, if you go on Big Brother, you'd have to repeat the first year again and all your hard work would be for nothing. And I was like, that's a sign. So I didn't go. But that was a plan. That was one of my plans. <laughs> you made it far. <laughs> yeah. I would have been in the house. I was... That's so crazy. <laughs> it's, I did so many things. So many things to try and... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, and who knew just comedy? All I did was just tell jokes. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Is that a knock on the door I hear? Well, yes, it is. We're in the high school guidance counselor's oh, office. lovely. I know that this is something you never had. No, we don't have that in Britain. What is it? What do you do? You basically, your high school guidance counselor, you go to them if you're having a hard time, if you need help. They're kind of like the high school therapist. Oh, nice. Yeah. So can you just go in the middle of classes? Yeah. What? Yeah. So in the middle of English, I could just be like... Bye. At my high school, like, if you really were having emotional, if you were in emotional duress, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, you could be like, I need to go to the guidance counselor. Is that not the school nurse? No. Different. Wow. It's literally like a therapist. Like, the guidance counselor is there. You know, some, 
I think it depends on the school. Like some people really use their school guidance counselors. Others don't. Some people's high school guidance counselors. I have a friend who was a high school guidance counselor and she dealt with some like really, really, really serious shit. Right. You know, students. Well, yeah, you don't have school shootings here and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have, I don't, we don't have school shootings. So we wouldn't need that, all of that. You know. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> high school in America is very scary. intense and very scary. intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so right now I'm seeing you. So now you're What's seeing your guidance me? counselor name? Oh, no one's asked me that. What? I think it's going to be, I, I, first, I don't know why I want to be called Professor Duck. Professor Duck? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Debbie, yes. I came in my head. <laughs> I want you to be Karen Caring. Okay, I'm Karen. No, no, I don't like Karen. <laughs> I can't be Karen. <laughs> Why not? I, I cannot be Karen You're Karen Caring. Karen Caring. I can be Carrie Caring. Carrie Caring. Carrie Caring. <laughs> okay, you're Carrie Caring. Yeah. The guidance counselor. Carrie Caring, a.k.a. Professor Duck. The, a.k.a. Professor Duck. <laughs> the, the guidance, guidance counselor. counselor. Okay. Do I call you by your name or do I have to call you ma'am or? You can call me whatever is going to make you feel comfortable. Oh, really? You like to call space. the guidance counselor their first name? Well, you know, I went in my high school, we called all of our teachers by their first names. <gasps> Blue. I know. By their first name? By their fir- it was a first name basis. So you could be like, oh, John? Yep. What's this trigonometry exactly. shit? Exactly. What? Yep. Wow. I know. What a lawless country. Well, I went to two very different high schools. The first one that I went to was a boarding school, Ooh. and everyone was Mr. and Mrs., and it right. was Serious. dress code, yeah. strict. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then my other high school after that. Relax, call me Dave. It was way more lax. No dress code. The rule was you had to wear like a shirt and shoes. That was like the rule. Wow. And some people didn't even wear shoes. Oh, wow. But but it was still very strict in some ways. But okay. yeah, it was like call me Dave. Okay. Call me Margaret. I love this. Yeah. This is great. Okay, so. So in this segment, Carrie, Carrie Caring Carrie is here Caring. to help you, you know, you can use this time to say fuck you to those bullies. Yeah. And you can use this time to do whatever it is. Rid yourself of the high school trauma that lurks on you oh. to this day. Yeah. If there's a moment, if there's a person, if there's a place, it's when we free ourselves. Thanks, Carrie. Karen. You're welcome. I am freeing myself from the shackles of embarrassment of writing Frasier fan fiction and getting teased for it. <laughs> Who made fun of your Frasier? Everybody! I used to write myself into episodes of Frasier. What, what, was, what De- was your part? Denise, his adopted British daughter. Used really? to help him get the ladies. Yes. And what? me and Uncle Niles had a lot of hijinks. It was great. Were you related to, in the fan fiction, Daphne? No, I was literally Frasier's adopted black British daughter, Denise. Okay, which I honestly love. As Thank you. The world and Frasier loved that I was British and I was very smart. So he used me to help get the ladies and I would date their sons. That is Come so on. good. So I literally want to say F you to everybody who was against my Frasier fan fiction. I want you to know that if you were at my high school, that would have made you very cool. What? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, the, the blues are calling to a salad and scrambled eggs. I mean. <laughs> oh, God. I'm very happy about was that. Was that your number one show? Um, yeah, it's one of them. I what love were, what, what were your top five? So, Frasier. <laughs> I obviously Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, I wrote myself into an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Do you it still was, have these? Uh, they're on a floppy disk. You need to come out with a book of short stories I of should. your short fan fiction. I have two that I literally have on my laptop, but the Frasier and the Fresh Prince. So, I did Frasier, Fresh Prince. They were the hit ones. Fresh Prince, I played Ashley's. English tutor. Okay. And so I was in, I gave myself a free part episode. Good for you. And I <laughs> you wrote can. it out. You're that recurring guest star, Literally. honey. <laughs> I wrote it out and the storyline was me and Will had a thing and we wanted to date, but then we decided that Ashley's education comes first. And it does. And it does. <laughs> and, so, and that's the kind of fan fiction you get from Student of the Year thank in you. 2003. Thank you. Now the craziest <laughs> thing is I sent it to Will Smith. He, he didn't receive it. It is. <laughs> Why did you send it to him? Well, when I was younger, I thought that the credits flashed on the end of a show so quickly because it had the actors' addresses mm. in it. 
So I sat close to the TV. Yes. And I would like look to see the address and the name of the actor and see if they had the address. And at the end of Fresh Prince, it's like graffiti, pink and green writing. Yeah. And then it says, Buena Vista Studios. So I wrote to Will Smith at Bel Air, yeah. Buena Vista Studios, mm -hmm. America, mm. and sent it. Love that. <laughs> and I wonder where it is. Where is it? Where? And I didn't put a return address. Do you so. still have... Do you still have that one? So I don't. I have the 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 like the the notes a scroll. I had yeah. a notebook where I was writing ideas for it, but the full on script I wrote it out and sent it to Will Smith. I wrote it out by hand, uh, sent it to Will Smith. So a then piece the, of art. Thank you. And then the final one was uh, that so Raven spin off mm. called that so Magpie, mm. and so Raven Simone can see into the future. Yeah, my character could see into the past, and we had a crossover episode. Okay, that's actually really good. Thank you. So they were the main three. Very, some might say ahead of ahead of your time. I, think I am, and it's crazy because right now I write a lot, yeah. and back then I wrote for fun, you know. Right. And I just would come home and just delve into these stories and my fan fiction, and just like that's what I did for fun. And now it's my job, and I feel like I see it as training. What I didn't know then, yeah, was I was training for my for my future. And I've met wow. Will Smith now. And it's just like, I, was I mean, he slapped say, Chris Rock. So this story's just gone weird. But before he slapped Chris Rock, I was like... When you met him, did you tell him that you wrote fan fiction? No, I couldn't. It was too much to unpack. It was at the premiere of King Richard. It was his night. I didn't want to be like, Will, Will, sit down. Will, yeah. I know it's about you right now, but let me tell you something, Will. Like, you know. But... I, I, one day, one day you'll get to tell well, him. Well, I don't know if I care to tell him anymore. It's changed. Yeah, that's true. It's what about changed. Kelsey Grammer? If you're to meet oh, Kelsey Grammer. Oh, Kelsey <laughs> Grammer. Listen, I have a sexual thing with him. Like, still. <laughs> like, he, I, I. I think I, you could probably smash Kelsey I Grammer. I could. I want to smash Kelsey. <laughs> like, let's just manifest this for me. I, I want think Kelsey it's already, Grammer. I think it's already set in stone. To smash me or go down on me. I will just, I, cause, uh, yeah, uh, this, ugh, the, I love him. I understand. I fucking love him. That need. Oh my God. For, oh, for the king, some might literally, say. <laughs> literally. Like, yes. Kelsey fucking grandma can uh, get it. Was that your, like, high school crush? Your yeah, celebrity and, crush? and Tony Blair, who you mentioned in the beginning. Tony who was Blair. Prime Minister. He was my first love. Really? Yeah, so he's just, like, this pale, thin-lipped Prime Minister of the UK. And yes. uh, when he got into power, I met him. And I sat on his lap, and he smelled like peaches. And I remember being like, this is love. That's the man. This is How the did man you meet him? Why are we so, sitting on his lap? So basically, when he <laughs> won, whenever a prime minister gets into power, they do like a parade. Yes. And uh, at the time, it was, you have the, the, the liberals are red in the UK. Yeah. So red was like everywhere. And red's my favorite color. And uh -huh. my mom gave me this red flag to wave. And I'm just a little black girl waving this red flag as this bus with the next prime minister goes through the streets. And I guess he saw a good photo opportunity and was like, hey, stop the bus and invited me on the bus. And I was oh like, my oh god. my God. Can we find this picture? I have searched for the picture. This must have been when he got into power. So two, I'm like eight, Nine, I don't know. It had to have been in 1998 yeah, I'm like, or I'm a, seven. I'm a child. Oh my God, we'll find it. I'm a child. We I'm have like, to yeah, find I'm it. a child. But I cannot find this picture for the life of me. But yes, he was my first love, Tony Blair. Oh my God. And then, yes, a Kelsey Graham. And then I really loved um, Boy, Meets, uh, Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah. But his brother, not. Corey, the older brother. You're not thinking of Ry not Ryder Strong. No, you're the thinking oldest. of the guy that played. Um, his real name's Will Friedle. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What was it? Was his name Chris? On I don't the show? know, but he could get it. Yeah, he was hot. He was hot, and then Shia LaBeouf. Obviously, even I used to think when I was a kid, even Stevens, Shia LaBeouf, and Raven Simone would be the the Angelina Jolie and the, the <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the Leonardo DiCaprio of my life. Like I was like that. Is art. What they're doing yeah. is quintessential acting. Yeah. I just, I thought Shia LaBeouf was the best comedy actor and Raven Smith was the best comedy actress in the world. I mean, I you kid. know, insa insane level of talent as yes, children. As children. And then. Well, I felt the same way with, for me, it was Amanda Bynes. I saw Amanda oh, Bynes yeah. and I was like, oh. I saw Amanda Bynes and I was like, 
that should be me. Yes. I watched all that as so many of us yes. did. And we were like, that should be me. Yes. And then my real tipping point was, of course, Hillary Duff, Lizzie McGuire, oh. where I was like, I am Lizzie McGuire. Yes. That should be me. Yes. I was robbed of a job. Yes. And then, of course, that trickled down into Disney Channel as a oh, whole. Oh, I was a cheater girl. Yeah. I was, me and my cousins, we were the cheater girls. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we knew the dances, we knew the songs, we could harmony. Wasn't it Adrian Bailon? Adrian Bailon, yes. A Adrian Bailon, Raven Simone, um, and then two other people. Yeah. <laughs> we only cared about Yeah, I was like, two. I was like, ah. Uh. When I say Cheetah Girls had a chokehold oh, on yeah. me yep. and my family growing up. Yep. As much as the Spice Girls. Cheetah Girls Huge. and the Spice Girls. I, I mean, Spice Girls were oh insanely I, formative to me. I all Who was yours? Who, scary. I wanted to be Ginger. I wanted to be Scary Spice. I thought Scary was the most beautiful woman. I got their tour book because I went to – that was like the first concert I got to go to for me, not like my parents taking me to see or like my mom taking me to see fucking like Little Feet or some shit. Um, And I had this gorgeous book. And I remember there was a black and white photo of Mel B mm-hmm. and it was more close up and she was wearing like one of those coats that had like a furry collar nice. and it was like a leopard coat with a furry collar and she had a gorgeous thick black wing like nice. eyeliner mm-hmm. and I was just like, this is the most gorgeous yeah. woman in the world and then there was another photo of her that was in color she's wearing a lavender jacket okay and her hair was like super curly like highlight when you, you know when it would be yeah. like highlighted mm-hmm. and that was the other picture that stuck out to me being like i would do anything to be this person See, it's so crazy because i felt like that about ginger spice ginger is also iconic Gin- i had my best friend was ginger was actually ginger and at, as a kid i don't remember thinking white people could be ginger like i was like you're white and then you're ginger and she'd be like no i'm actually ginger i used to think that ginger spice was called ginger spice because she liked ginger beer and i love ginger That's beer so, funny. so my argument was always like you don't even drink ginger beer so how can you be ginger spice yeah. i drink ginger beer and she's like i'm actually ginger i'm like no you're white it was a whole thing so every time i always had to be scary spice because i was the black girl i, I was group. gonna say were you forced to be scary forced all the time to be scary but deep down, I was a ginger. I love ginger spice. I ginger, love Jerry Halliwell. Everyone, I I love all of them. I love all. Yeah, to be fair, and now I know them. It's crazy. We, like it's just like things that you just really wanted so much as a kid, and then the reality is like, oh yeah, Emma Bunton is a huge fan. Like Baby obsessed. Spice is a huge fan of yours. Well, everyone always, whenever anybody asks me who my Spice Girl is, everyone's always like, was it Baby? Because you're blonde. Yeah, and How I'm dare like, they? and I'm like. It was, it was scary was my number one, and then my number two sporty. was sporty. Everyone's number two is sporty. Sporty was sick. And then I also went on to be a Mel C solo career solo artist career, fan. Big tune. Okay. Big song. I know we have to wrap it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tevi, Tevi's, like, Tevi's like, please shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just bought the it's so good. I watched. Uh, where can I get it? Because I want to watch it. You need to get America. it on Amazon. I have to buy it. On yeah, Amazon. you need to buy the physical DVD. You can't oh. stream it anywhere. You what need the to... fuck? I know. I don't have a DVD player. Well, honey, you're gonna have to get one. Or oh. you got. You can come to my friend Bob's house because we were watching okay, it the I other day. I want to watch it with you and Bob because yeah. I missed that movie so it's much. So good. I know it word perfect. The claymation. Oh Alan my god. Cummings. There's so many meatloaf. It's the yeah. tour. Fucking bus driver. Everyone. Oh, yeah, Also, yeah. the random pregnant friend that yeah, actually makes no... Yeah, for no reason, no yeah. impact in the movie whatsoever. Why but she I was remember there. Nicola! It's, why? Why? Can, can pregnant people get stretch marks? No, Victoria. <laughs> like, honestly... What I should I wear? The little Gucci dress? Yes, or the, the little, little Gucci, Gucci dress. dress. Or, or the, the little, little Gucci, Gucci dress. dress. It's yeah. so good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Also, talk about a movie... Chupa Chubs. Remember those lollipops? Chupa Chubs. How dare you say them? That is not what they're... Chupa Chubs. What? That is not how they're pronounced. How does it pronounce? What the fuck is a Chupa Chub? Chupa Chub. Is that what you call it in this country? Yeah, isn't you it You call Chupa them Chubs? Chupa Chubs? Chupa Chub. Chupa Chubs? What do you call it? Chupa Chubs. <laughs> Chupa Chubs lollipops. Chupa, Chupa Chubs. Chubs. Chupa. <laughs> Chupa Chops. Chupa Chops. Wow. The debate That's the craziest thing you've said today oh. is Chupa Chops. Well, London 
what if you could go back in time and give your little your little high school self, your yeah. little secondary school self any advice, what would it be? It would be London, you were fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a whole queen, you're a bad bitch, and everything you said would happen will happen. Just wait, be patient, you got this. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Um and lastly, like, I know you didn't, ha- I usually ask, like, <laughs> did you wear a prom dress? No. <laughs> no, didn't go to prom. Didn't go to prom. I mean, we had a fake prom because we were just trying to be American. It yeah. wasn't a real prom. It was a fake prom. It wasn't, there was no pomp and circumstances, no prom queen, prom king. Yeah. It was just a party that well, they called fun. a prom. So I wore a pink dress and a tiara. Oh. <laughs> I love that. And lastly, even though I know you didn't have them, but if oh, yeah. you if if your class could have given you a senior superlative, what would it have been? Okay, do you so think? what is a senior superlative? It's like most likely, or it's either like most likely to be famous, or like best smile, or best dressed, Ooh. or or class clown, or whatever it is. Mine, I would have, I would have had most likely to be famous because mm. it was all I fucking did Talked was talk about, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And class clown because I used to make the bullies laugh so they wouldn't beat me up <laughs> a good one two punch oh my god london what a treat this has been having you it's on been great a lovely trip down memory lane Thank you i for could me. talk with you about this forever <laughs> can you sing us out is that what you do i I, I i could but first i need you to tell everyone where to watch you, uh, oh watch you god. and consume your fame consume and all your glory my fame on netflix if you literally type in london hughes in netflix about Seven things come up and they're all me. So just go through that. Start with my Netflix special to catch a dick. It's exceptional. And then you can watch the Netflix after party with me, David Spade, a fortune theme star, and the history of swear words with me and Nicolas Cage and amazing other comedians. I think Joel Kim Booster and is on Joel Kim Booster's on swear that. Words. And there's a couple other shows on there with me in it. So just type me into Netflix and go crazy. Or I love it. follow me on Instagram, Twitter, The London News. I love I'm it. I'm available. LA, I'm here. And I want to stress, LA, I love you. I'm here. <laughs> London is in LA now. I'm Hollywood Hughes. I'm here to stay. God bless America. <laughs> oh my goodness what a beautiful episode of senior superlatives this was we took a trip across the pond um thank you all for listening <laughs> thank you thank you for listening thank you for subscribing as i say every week stay cool never change and as a request by hollywood hughes yes. i will be singing us out you need some love like oh, I never need a love yes. before. I want to make love to you, baby. I had a little love and now I'm back for more. want to make love to you, baby. Set your spirit free. It's the only way to be. Woo! <laughs> yeah, spice up your life. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>